What's up, everybody? This is the Sports League Podcast. I'm your host, Alex League. We got Dean back on the show. Good to have you, Dean. Yeah, hey, uh, Alex, uh, back again, huh? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're getting into the heart of the season, and, and uh, you know, we're starting to see some teams separate themselves from the pack, you know, the undefeateds. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's getting to be my favorite time of the year, and we're heading into a weekend with so many good games coming up. I can't wait. Yeah, this next week's going to be awesome. Um, it's nice to get past all these preliminary games uh, mm, with yep. the Division Two guys and get yep. into some meat uh, and potatoes. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we're starting to get some conference play going, and it, just, it starts to get fun from here on out. Um. Let's look at so Thursday night Miami blows out Bethune Cookman, uh, forty eight to seven. How do you feel about Miami this year? They're three and zero. Do you think they could be a threat? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, you no, know, they they didn't play anybody worth really mentioning, but you know yeah. that was expected blowout. So mm -hmm. it's hard to judge, you know. Um, but um, I think Miami's going to be uh you know a team to reckon with like i said before mm -hmm. yeah they're a good team in that conference you know i mean miami clemson i think would be pretty evenly matched right now i think florida state is probably my favorite team in that conference but miami clemson quite a few good teams in there north carolina yeah um memphis improves the three and oh with a win over navy uh, is Memphis any good? Do you think? I mean, they're three and zero. I would say Memphis is is a, a good team. Um, yeah, and I, I'm not so sure that Navy is. So again, that win was only by four points. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I don't know. I still we're we're still in that questionable area. We it won't be until next week, or I mean, this weekend and the week afterwards. Yeah, we to really see who's uh, really going to be contending. Yeah, and a bunch of three and O teams are taking on other three and O teams. Yeah, so that's yes. a, that's a big test games right there. Um, Friday night, I was looking forward to watching Talia Tungavailoa with Maryland, and they beat up Virginia forty two to fourteen. I root for Talia, you know, the younger brother of Tua. And he's got Maryland off to a three and zero start. Pretty good start for Maryland. Yeah, must be the blood, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that was good to see him do that. Yeah, um, Army gets a win to improve to two and one. Air Force gets the three and zero. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on those two schools. Um, let's go to Saturday. So Georgia, number one Georgia, survives a scare at home. Against South Carolina, actually, we're down fourteen to three at halftime, and uh, I was all eyes on this game, rooting for Georgia to get beat. But they get it going in the second half and get the win, most importantly. But you know, what did you think when they were down fourteen three at halftime? Well, I, I don't put a lot of uh, uh, measure on the first half of any ball game. Yeah. Um, because I've seen so many times where, you know, you get a, a game that gets to be lopsided right away, but the better team normally gets it together and finds a way to pull it out. And, and they did. Yeah. So they get credit for, uh, getting their act together. It wasn't, um, I don't think it's number one quality play. Yeah. But they won. Yeah. Yeah. And the goal is, you know, with any season, is to be playing your best football at the end and in your most meaningful game. So to, you know, who cares? Like, I mean, it's it's worrisome and the entire country's watching when you're down 14-3, to but as long as you get it together, play better in the second half and get a win, you know, you're not really too upset as long as you stay undefeated. Yes, that's pretty much the way the thinking is. Yeah. So... Good on Georgia to bounce back in that second half. Impressive by South Carolina to hang in as long as they did. And uh, it was actually a good game. 
How about Florida State survives in Chestnut Hill against Boston College? Uh, they were up big at one point, and then Boston College fights back. And you got to uh, tell me about this, what your thoughts were on this. So Boston College returns a f- uh, recovers a fumble and returns it for a touchdown, and they're down nine at this point. And if they kick the extra point, then it's just a one-score game. You're down eight, which is a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Instead, they go for two and fail, and now you're down two scores. Does that make any sense to you, why a team would rather be down two scores than one? No. I mean, you you just ran through the common sense part of it all. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it either. I, it see, seems like sometimes they have their head in the sand, <laughs> you know, and they're not thinking about the rest of the game. They just at a moment, uh, I guess, it just – the, the, they're just all hyped up or something, I guess. <laughs> well, and we're seeing this in the NFL. And it, it, what I believe it is, it's an analytics movement. They're going by the analytics and the numbers. And Chris Collinsworth and Al Michaels had this debate on Sunday Night Football one time. And Chris Collinsworth said, you go for two to see if you're going to need one score or two. And Al Michaels goes, well, I don't want to know that I need two scores, (laughs) you know? Like, I'm just going to kick the extra point. Then I know it's a one-score game. Yeah, we need a two-point conversion, but we only need one touchdown. Yeah, you got to get the ball, you got to score, and then get the ball back. Yeah. So the benefits of cutting the lead to seven versus the negative effects of needing two scores far outweigh themselves and I would keep it one score every single time. Yeah, I I agree with you there, Alec. I, I, that didn't make any sense to me either. Yeah, because Boston College actually scores again later, so it's 31-22. They're down nine. They score a touchdown. You get within two points, and they can't get the ball back. And, uh, you know, I think that decision in that moment cost them the game because – Otherwise, you would have had an opportunity to tie it. And how much yeah. better would Boston College be feeling if they could have tied that game? Yes. So. Yeah, that's that's hindsight. You know? <laughs> yeah. Now, an analytics community tries to tell you that that's the right move to go for two, two there. And I disagree strongly. And, you know, common sense says kick the extra point. I don't know what analytics numbers they're going with but it makes zero sense to me. Well, analytics and common sense are, you know, can be very opposite. Yeah. You know, exactly. I mean, you got you to look at the time, uh, so many other factors. Yeah. You know, and that, and that doesn't take that into account. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, Boston, they, were, they were fortunate to hang on to that game. Florida State? Yes. Yeah. You know, they didn't play their best ball. They allowed Boston College back into it. Uh, but, again, they survived the scare and get the win, so they're happy right. with that. But things aren't all great there in Florida State as their star wide receiver, Keon Coleman, tweets after the game putting three footballs, which is alluding to only being targeted three times. So he seems frustrated about the lack of his involvement in the offense. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're going to get that with elite uh, athletes. Yeah, they're never going to get the ball enough. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't care how many times you throw the ball to this guy. Yeah, it's yep. not going to be enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and to, I don't like that at all because to me, uh, it, the you won the game. It's a team thing. Yeah, um, get the get that personal crap out of the way yeah yeah and i mean that's just the modern athlete right and especially with social media where they can go at any point and vent their frustrations on social media you see a lot more of it nowadays yeah and that can backfire on you you know yeah. i mean just, just be a teammate man i mean i, I don't get it yeah so we'll see how Florida State navigates, you know, a close call and an upset receiver. But 
they're still a very talented team, and we'll see if they can keep it going or if it derails their season at some point. Yeah, uh, still, it's pretty bad because they were favored by almost four touchdowns. Yeah. And, and squeaked by. And it's like, yeah. I don't, it's, I just still think it's always the thing where you can get, uh, you can underrate your opponent. Yeah. And not really uh, get yourself prepared to play uh, the game. And mm -hmm. this is what happens. <laughs> Yeah, and you should never look past a road game at Boston College. I just feel like no matter how bad Boston College is, if it's a rivalry game or a conference game, they're going to show up and give you their best effort. Yeah. So, uh, interesting game there. Texas improves a 3-0 and with a big win over Wyoming, 31-10, to so they didn't mess around, took care of business there. Um. How are you feeling about Texas going forward? Do you think Texas is a legit national championship contender, a a, a playoff team, do you think? Oh, geez. <laughs> I know are it's they, early. They're right on the edge. I don't know if I can just say, yeah. They're, if it was 12 teams, I'd say, yeah. Yeah. But right now, I, I would say uh, they got some work to do. They, I don't think they've played – well enough to, to to get that nod. Yeah. And they beat Bama in at Tuscaloosa, but we're still figuring out who Bama is, too. Well, Bama's a question mark, so I, yeah. I don't know what that win means yet. Yeah, exactly. Um, Ohio State improves a 3-0 and with a big win over Western Kentucky. The offense finally wakes up and put up 63 points on the Hilltoppers. And uh, Ohio State hopes that their offense is waking up just in time as we got a great game in South Bend this weekend, Ohio State at Notre Dame. College game day is going to be here. Pat McAfee, Desmond Howard, the whole crew, Lee Corso. So I can't wait for this game this weekend. I bet you can't wait either. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this contest Uh it's going to be the, the, the test of the Titans, I think. Yeah. Uh, scoring 63 points. Um, I mean, that was West Virginia. But still. West, you, West, you, West uh, Kentucky. Western, yeah, Western Kentucky. I'm sorry. Yeah. But uh, 63 points is still a lot of points. So, yeah. they got to be feeling pretty good about their offense. Yeah. And it's a good test for Notre Dame's defense. You know, Notre Dame's played pretty well to this point. And now you've got a couple elite wide receivers coming in. And so we'll see how the secondary holds up against Marvin Harrison Jr. and those guys. Yep. It's going to be a good ball game to watch. Yeah. I can't wait. I'm right here next to South Bend, and I'm definitely going to go over there and be, and watch the games on campus and, you know, the, the tailgate and all that. So it'll be a lot of fun. Um. <clears throat> Penn State over Illinois, 30-13. to 13. They stay undefeated. Uh, Washington destroys my Spartans. I was hoping just for a good game, and it wasn't that. 41-7. to seven. And uh, oh, Washington... Yeah, I, I think your, your words were, I hope they're competitive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm starting... Sorry. I think it's going to be a lost season, and the Mel Tucker firing, it doesn't help at all. Like, it was already a season that was going to be tough with the talent. And you take away Mel Tucker and, like, some bad vibes there at Michigan State, I just think it's going to be a long season now. Yeah, I think you're right there. Um, you know, I don't even know, have they even discussed a uh, replacement? Uh, they've got an interim coach, uh, but I haven't heard anything about the full-time replacement yet. Yeah. So, so we'll see on that. Um, Notre Dame takes care of business, forty-one seventeen over Central Michigan. Uh, uh, you feeling confident about Notre Dame going to this game? I mean, they did what they were supposed to do. They're go go in undefeated, a battle of two undefeated teams. 
It's an opportunity for a great statement win for Notre Dame. Are you feeling confident? Yeah, I I, I think they're. Uh, uh, I, I do believe that Notre Dame has their their act together. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I, and I don't know what the spread is. Do you know yet? Um, uh, I can look it up here real quick. I don't know off the top of my head. Let me see here. I got to believe it's close. Yeah, I would think so. I think Notre Dame should be favored. Um, no, Ohio State minus three. Okay, well they they're they're looking at uh, I guess the the ratings, right? Yeah, number six and number nine. Yeah, so they're kind of looking at that. So, yeah, you know, I think man, I I would think it's closer than that. I would honestly almost have Notre Dame favored. At home, I just feel like Notre Dame's the better team. Well, in in my in my mind, I think that's uh, a uh, added factor for Notre Dame. Yeah, to be an underdog, to be yeah an underdog at home. Yeah, well, that's going to be in their crawl. Yeah, so that just helps Notre Dame. That's all that does. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a great game. And, uh, I, you know, I wouldn't be upset if they win because then South Bend is going to be crazy uh, Saturday night. So I'd yes. be cool with that. <laughs> um, speaking of, so the last time Notre Dame played Ohio State, their starting quarterback was Tyler Buckner, and he played okay but not great. Uh, in week th- three, Bam uh, – uh, bench Jalen Milrow and started Tyler Buckner against South Florida, and boy, he really struggled. Do you see that? Yeah. What yes. do you think of uh, of him struggling so bad there at Bama? Oh, I don't know. I, you know, we we talked about that originally. You know, the we always felt that the quarterback was going to be the the question mark. Yeah, and it still is. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know why you would take out uh, the quarterback that won your last ball game. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't quite understand that. You talk uh, about uh, – uh, so they started Tyler Buckner, benched him for Ty Simpson, and he came in and fi- finished the job, got the win, looked better than Buckner. Do you think they should go with Ty Simpson going forward? I was surprised they benched Jalen Milrow to begin with. After, I, and it, it seemed like an overreaction to the Texas loss, right? Yes, yeah, I think so too. I, I they just seem confused to me. Yeah, and it's yeah. just an unusual spot for uh, uh, Alabama to be in. Yeah, definitely. And so I, it just tells me that they're in, they're they're in a uh, an area where I believe that they're vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, most every game yeah. they play. Yeah. And I I think Milrow is the best quarterback on the roster, but he's not without flaws. And I think ESPN or someone was like, uh, it, it used to be, it didn't matter who the quarterback was for Notre Dame. They were still going to dominate you in the trenches and everything like that. Now, not so much, and they're more reliant on the quarterback, and you're seeing the quarterback flaws now more than ever. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. So they barely, you know, they just they put up 17 points against South Florida, and uh, they got, you know, a tough opponent coming up uh, this weekend. So we'll see how Bama looks. They're 2-1 and one to start the year, and we'll see – you know, how the season goes for them, but they need to get that quarterback position figured out. Yeah. Um, How about number 11, Tennessee, losing to the Florida Gators? How about that outcome? I didn't see that coming. Yeah. I really did. And, and it really wasn't that close. 26-7 to 7 Florida at halftime. Yeah, I, it's like I was stunned. Yeah, it's like they didn't show up. I, I, <laughs> you know, I, I think you know sometimes you know when you preach 
uh, how bad it is for you to go to to Florida and play. Yeah. You keep hearing this all the time. You know, it's almost like, you know, you're, you're writing the script for them. Yeah. They're, they're not supposed to win there in Florida. So, you know, <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> I, I just can't believe it. This was, like I told you last week, this was Tennessee's uh, year to do something. Yeah. Yeah. They just flunked their test. Yeah. You know, I mean, you've seen Tennessee at their best with Peyton Manning and those teams of Tennessee. It's been a, I haven't really seen Tennessee be that good in so long. And for me, mentally, every year they get ranked high in the preseason and I never fall for it. I'm always like, ah, it's Tennessee. They're going to lose a couple games they shouldn't almost every year, you know? Yeah, well. You're right. <laughs> they did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I was surprised too. I mean, the final score twenty nine to sixteen, but that twenty six to seven halftime score, it's like, man, Florida really just t- took it to them. And uh, I don't think many people saw that coming. Regardless of Tennessee's, you know, ability to lose games that they shouldn't, no one really saw that one coming. No, I, I sure didn't see that coming. Uh, yeah. I just didn't think that Florida was going to be that dominant. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, good win for the Gators, though. Uh, they take down number 11. Uh, Utah takes care of business. Oregon takes care of business. Setting up Oregon, Colorado in week four. That's going to be a must watch game, huh? Uh, yeah, there we go. Now, this, this, I know we've been talking all along. Every time Colorado plays, we say, all right, now this is this is a game they got to prove themselves. Yeah. And, you know, they, they seem to pull it off. And, yep. And, you, again, we're going to say it again. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if they beat Oregon and USC in back-to-back weeks, we got to stop saying that, right? At that yeah. point, it's like Colorado's arrived. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to go on a limb and say uh, I don't think Colorado's going to win the next two games. Yeah, I agree with you. And we'll talk about Colorado here in a second. But without their star receiver slash corner, Travis Hunter, that's a huge loss. It is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, LSU beats Mississippi State. Good job. We talked about that game being a potential trap game. Good job by LSU of not taking them lightly, putting up 41 points and winning that game pretty easily. How about number 15, Kansas State, getting beat by Missouri, and Missouri's out to a 3-0 and start. Yeah, again, there's another one I didn't see coming. Yeah. And uh, – Everyone takes kickers for granted until you need them, right? And, you know, everyone says, oh, stupid kicker. Like, never let it come down to a kicker. Don't kick the field goal. Go for it on fourth down. Well, Missouri needed a 61-yarder, and their kicker, Harrison Mavis, hits the 61-yarder as time expires, and the fans rush the field for a big upset of Kansas State. Uh, great job by their kicker. 61 yards in college is no joke. And the Missouri Tigers, 3-0, and pretty good start. Yeah, that's, you got to give them uh, kudos. They, they they played a tough team and and uh, took it to them. Yeah. Uh, you know, so um, I don't know anything about Missouri yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that was an impressive win. Eye-opening, yeah. Yeah, so... You know, um, their their next game is, uh, I think, going to be a little more uh, telling, and uh, we'll we'll see whether they can keep that win streak going. But I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. I, I just don't have any feeling for what Missouri is. Yeah, this is maybe a game to keep an eye on this weekend. 3-0 and Memphis at 3-0 and Missouri. Two teams we don't know a lot about, and the winner is probably going to shoot up in our respect factor, you know? Yes, exactly so, right, yes. Yeah, 
that'll be a fun game to keep an eye on this weekend. Um, Oregon State beat San Diego State, takes care of business. Ole Miss has looked pretty good so far to start the year. They blow out Georgia Tech. 3-0 and Ole Miss Rebels, and they're playing, I believe, Bama this weekend. Uh, that's right. Ole Miss at Bama, a battle of two 3-0 and teams. That's going to be a, a game to watch right there. Yeah. Now, now you got uh, a flip of a coin. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how to pick that game. Yeah. My gut... I lean Alabama at home, their history, Nick Saban, uh, Ole Miss's ability to lose games they shouldn't or lose the big game. So I, I lean Alabama, but if the quarterback struggles or whatever, Ole Miss could steal it. I mean, you know. Well, yeah, and, and you know, Bama only scored 17 points. Yeah. Against Southern Florida. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, you know that uh, Ole Miss is going to score more than 17 points. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of a toss-up to me. It would be interesting to see what the spread is. Uh, Bama will probably be favored only because they're home. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. But I would think so. I would think they're favored. Uh, they're favored by six and a half. Well, that's. It's more than I thought. Man, I want to. I'm gonna have to watch this game because, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know which way it goes. Actually, Bama's two and one, not three and zero. Oh. Well, that, I, I think it. that's gonna be a battle. I, you know, un, unless Alabama suddenly gets their quarterback thing straightened out. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be, uh, I think, an interesting, uh, interesting battle. I like that they're going back to Jalen Milrow. I think he's the better of the three options, but is he good enough to to win the you know these games and put up enough points? You know, Texas outscored them, and they had two turnovers in that game. So we'll see if Ole Miss can put up points. Alabama might be in trouble. Right. Yeah. I. I. I if it's a tight uh, ball game, I mean, low scoring tight golf game. I'll yeah, give it to Bama. But yeah, if it has based on points scored, I've got to lean yeah. toward uh, Ole Miss. Yeah, I agree with that. Did you stay up late and watch the Colorado Colorado State game? Did I stay up and watch the whole thing? Yeah, did you stay up late? It, it got over at like two a.m. I think. Are you kidding? Why would I leave that game? <laughs> I know. Come on, this I mean. We're, we're college football guys. We don't go to bed when it's something like that's happening. Exactly. That was the game of the weekend. Um, I was so impressed. Colorado's trying to prove themselves, right? And, you know, I was impressed against TCU. They looked great against uh, Nebraska. But this game was key because Colorado State being a rival, the trash talk pregame, and then it was like they were coached up to take cheap shots. Like, they were literally trying to punk the Colorado team and see if they were mentally tough. Did you get that? Absolutely. Uh, That's exactly correct. Yeah. And uh, credit to Colorado for for step standing up to it and fighting back. I mean, a, a, an incredible game. Um, and they were down two scores in the fourth quarter as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I the stepping up of Colorado State uh, was good, except uh, they they did some things that weren't really, I don't think, uh, football worthy. No, uh, it, it looked like they were trying to take out the two best players, and they successfully took out Travis Hunter. And I saw a hit in the second half that looked like they were trying to take out Shador Sanders as well. Well, they it, it bounced right off of him. I mean, I mean, they, yeah. they crushed him to the ground. Yeah. And, and he got up like nothing happened. Yeah. I was so glad to see that. Yeah. But yeah, and I mean, I mean, and, and that's that what I was hit, saying. They they were out. To, go ahead. They were out to win this ball game and take out their stars. Yes. Yep, and uh, 
and credit to Colorado for staying tough. I mean, they hit Travis Hunter hard. They He suffered a lacerated liver on that hit. Yeah, uh, when you got to go to the hospital, you know it's that serious. Yeah, uh, but, I mean, Colorado handled it very well. Uh, Travis Hunter s- didn't say anything negative about the hit, said it's just football and I'll be back stronger than ever. Uh, Colorado State received some some hate mail, some hate messages, some death threats, and Deion Sanders called that out and said, I hope it's not our fans that are doing that, and we have no room for that in football. So that was nice to see from Colorado as well. Well, the idiots that do that sort of thing, they're not college football fans. Exactly. They're 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 idiots. Simply. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, uh, even regardless whether something is purposed or not, that is one person that mm-hmm. has done something that and and I'm not sure that it was uh, an aggressive, deliberate act to take these guys out, but they were going to play them tough and hard. Yeah. And if they yeah. could bounce off them and hit them an extra a little bit, they were going to do it. Yeah, exactly. It just so happened that it, that hit uh, took him out for the whole game. Yeah. And, uh, I, I mean, I don't know why. We get that, too, down here sometimes with the Alabama thing. Yeah, where, where there's people who hate, and, uh, and and that's not that's just not the game. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, you see it from time to time, and it, it's usually the casual fans who aren't big football fans, and they're just super emotional and and want to be hateful. You know, I mean, those are the people that are gonna post political hate messages as well you know what i mean yeah yep you're right so you know screw those guys it's good uh, that he handled it that way was just kind of passed it off but that's not necessary you yeah know, we're fine yeah. you know yeah colorado came across as the bigger man the the better team yeah. um and how about you know you're down in the fourth quarter and colorado state to their credit pins them deep and Shador Sanders leads Colorado on a 98-yard drive uh, with two minutes to go and converts a two-point conversion to to tie the game and force overtime. That, to me, that game and the comeback, that, to me, put Shador Sanders officially in the Heisman run, running. Like, to, to he was clutch. And he was clutch against TCU. But that 98-yard drive to go tie the game, incredible especially after the cheap shots and the hits that they had, had taken all game it's it's almost like he just decided that that's enough you know yeah. i'm just going to get this thing and we're going to go down here and we're going to do our thing and yeah. i'm going to lead them all the way and he did mm-hmm. I, I mean he's at the top of the list as far as i'm concerned yeah I, he's got like 10 he's got 78 percent completion uh, 10 touchdowns, one interception, um, a multiple clutch fourth quarter game winning drives, a great start. Yeah. So, um, credit to Shador Sanders, credit to Dion the kid, safety Shiloh Sanders with a big force fumble that started the comeback and a big pick six in the first half. <laughs> yeah. Those- the Sanders kids are pretty good, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Maybe that's in the blood? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not uh what do you call it? It's not nepotism. These dudes play. Yes. <laughs> and I, I think a lot of people were rooting for Colorado. When you see Colorado State, the trash talk pregame, the hits that were borderline over the line. And then do you see him score the touchdown and do the the prime dance yeah. and the, you know, just making fun of Colorado the whole time? It's like, come on, Colorado, step up to these guys, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a great ball game. That was worth staying up for. Yes, absolutely. Um, so that was a great cap to a, a really good week of college football. Um, Oklahoma takes care of business. Um, North Carolina beats Minnesota pretty handedly. 
Duke goes to three and zero. How about I sent you that picture? How about the basketball schools in college football? A bunch of them are three and zero. Yeah. Um, so far, they're yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no three and zero, four and zero. That's usually about as far as it goes, and then you start playing. You know your conference play and better opponents, and then you start to come back down to earth a little bit. Well, they they still got some uh, games ahead of them yet that they can still win. Yeah. You know, so I mean, they can still run that record out a little bit more. But you're right; yeah. they're going to get into their conference, and uh, then then they're really going to be tested. Absolutely. Um, Duke over Northwestern, another basketball school is three and zero. Northwestern looks terrible this year. Washington State with a blowout win. UCLA blowout win. Uh, Iowa blowout win over Western Michigan. Louisville beats Indiana. Um, Wake Forest three and zero. How about Ohio beats Iowa State? That's a bad loss for Iowa State. Yeah, I never didn't see that one coming either. Yeah, and low scoring, ten to seven. Yeah, I that just is confusing to me. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't see any of it, so I, I really don't know, you know, what would cause such a mediocre uh, output. Yeah, it's interesting to see a team like Iowa State lose a game like that, and another team like that, Virginia Tech, gets beat by Rutgers pretty handily, thirty-five to sixteen. And Rutgers is three and zero. Pretty good start for Rutgers. I I told you before uh, they got yeah. their coach back. Yeah, and uh, he knows what he's doing. And uh, I I think they're to be reckoned with. I really yeah. do. Um, yeah. But Virginia uh, Tech, Virginia Tech isn't any good. Yeah. Why do you think is that just a one year outlier, or why do you think Virginia Tech's so down this year? They've been down for some time. Yeah, and I, they're they're fighting. They're fighting to get back to you know some similar to what they were at one time. Yeah, and it's not going to be overnight. Yeah, uh, if they'll stay with the coach and and uh, support him, uh, I think he'll get the job done. But right now, they're not. Uh, they're they're not any competition really. Yeah, um, Iowa State, their loss surprised me, one and two. Virginia Tech losing surprised me. How about Oklahoma State gets beat by South Alabama and 33-7? to seven. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that jumps off the screen to me like, what? Yeah, again, uh, I, nobody knows anything uh, about South Alabama. Yeah, <laughs> we know a little bit about them down here. Um, yeah, they um, they they are usually fighting uh, right down to the nub, winning their conference. Yeah, so they are a good team. Mm-hmm. You just don't hear about them because they don't necessarily uh, show any flash when it comes to playing other conferences. Yeah, um, and that I mean that is a statement. Yeah, Big Twelve win. Yeah, uh, thirty three. You know, the Big Twelve guy says, "Let's go play." Uh, what is it, South Alabama? Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. not, not take him serious. Yeah, and run into a buzzsaw. Yeah, South Alabama. South Alabama is the one that always catches me off guard because the three, the letters they use for the score is USA. Yes, cool. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, how about Auburn beats up on Samford and gets the three and oh 45 13 win three and oh Auburn Tigers how about that yeah excellent start I, I was impressed because uh, Samford is a very good division two team mm-hmm. so uh, they won that one um, soundly yeah so uh, Auburn's uh, going to be uh, someone that everybody has to pay attention to. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how they do in conference play. 
Uh, Auburn, a great game coming up on Saturday at two and one Texas A and M. Yes, now that will tell you whether or not Auburn is really um, back back in uh, stride. Yeah. Um, and honestly, um, I think Auburn has a good shot of winning it. Yeah, and a, a loss there. W- I mean, do you think a loss there could doom Jimbo Fisher? I mean. Aggies fans would not be happy with that. No, they wouldn't. But I, I'm just, I don't know what they're going to do with this coach. But the, the money thing is just so, yeah, uh, got some hands tied. Yeah, uh, he's not a bad coach. It just for some reason the, the team just isn't playing well. Yeah. Now yeah. I don't know whether he's got doesn't have good coordinators or you know other things. Yeah. Uh, I've not seen uh, an AM game yet, so I don't know. Well, and I know they hired uh, the former Louisville head coach to be the offensive coordinator. Yeah, right. That's what, I, I mean, that should help. I don't really get it. Yeah, I don't either. So, you know, a big game for both teams, Texas A&M and Auburn. That's going to be a, a game to watch and going to answer some questions right there. Um. I still think either either team can win. Actually, yeah, uh, I, I I can't write off A and M. Yeah, uh, Auburn hasn't played anyone really really tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, they won all their games, but they've not played any marquee team. So it's a big this first. This is their time. first one. Yeah, conference play and. Uh, and it, on the road, so it would be yeah. a statement win if they can get it done. Yes. Um, Nebraska gets their first win of the Matt Rule era, 35-11 to 11 over Northern Illinois. BYU 3-0, and Kentucky 3-0, and Syracuse 3-0, and um, and Fresno State 3-0. and So good starts for those teams. Let's look ahead to week four real quick. Uh, Thursday night, 3-0 and Georgia State at Coastal Carolina. Opportunity for Georgia State to go on the road, get to 4-0. Um, so we'll see on that. Friday night, Wisconsin at Purdue. Uh, NC State, Virginia. Boise State, San Diego State. Air Force, San Jose State. But the best games are on Saturday. Right. Right. Uh, Let's talk about three and O Rutgers at three and O Michigan. Uh, I believe Jim Harbaugh's back for this game, right? I think so. I really don't know. I think it was a three game suspension, so I think he's back for this game at home against Rutgers. Rutgers is three and O. Any chance Rutgers can? Uh, I don't know. I don't think Rutgers pulls off the win, but I hope they can keep it close. Uh. It's a good game to have the coach back. Yeah. They, they need him back. Yeah. They're missing something. Yep. Uh, I think it's obvious. I mean, they're not playing dominant ball. Yeah. And so I think getting the coach back is going to help a lot. Um, Rutgers is going to give them a battle, I think. Yeah. Make them sweat a little bit. See how Michigan responds to it. Yeah. Uh, I think Michigan wins, but I don't think it's a blowout, and I hope not. I hope Rutgers puts up a fight, keeps it close, and I and we'll find out more about Michigan after this game. Uh, I have a I have a tender spot in my, my college football heart when uh-huh. it comes to Rutgers because they're one of the first original guys. Okay, you know, and it's just like God, just be fun to have Rutgers as a competitive team. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate it. Like, and especially if you go into the big house and beat Michigan, I mean, we'll be part-time Rutgers fans the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, I don't know. You know, it, it's not uh, as big a university, so I mean, the, the you know, the talent's not equal, so. Yeah. It'll be, yeah. It'll, be, it'll be tough. <laughs> I do like the matchup of, of the coaching matchup, Greg Schiano against Jim Harbaugh, two guys that have both gone to the pros and come back. They, they're they both excellent coaches. Yes, they are. No question. 
Um, how about number four in the country, three and zero, Florida State at two and one, Clemson. Now, Florida State going, you know, a tough game against Boston College, an unhappy receiver. Florida State better show up and play their best ball because Clemson is very capable of winning this game. Yeah, and I almost think that the the performance for Florida State last week was yeah. because they were looking at this game. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that may have something to do it with it. Um, so, rightfully so, they should be paying attention to this yeah. game. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, I'm rooting for Florida State, but they need to play their best game. They don't want to get caught napping because if they do, Clemson can sneak up and steal that game. Yeah, again, uh, I'd be interested to see what that spread is. Yeah, I mean, if you're Clemson, you can easily wipe that Duke loss and put that in the back of your, you know, put that away if you come out here and beat number four Florida State, right? Yes. You know, you can re- rebound your season in a hurry with one win. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah. And Clemson has everything to play for. Yeah, so I think they'll be prepared. Should yeah, be a good ball game. Absolutely. Um, number sixteen, three and zero, Oklahoma at two and one, Cincinnati. Uh, keep an eye on this game. I expect Oklahoma to win, but at Cincinnati, who knows? Um, oh, yeah, I agree. Two and one Army at three and zero Syracuse opportunity for Syracuse to get to four and zero. We talked about Auburn at Texas A and M. That's a great game. One of the ones you know must watch. Um, three and zero Kentucky at two and two Vanderbilt. Now like, we've been talking about Vanderbilt. They didn't have high expectations. They're coming back down to earth. Kentucky take care of business. Be a quote unquote bad Vanderbilt team. Get to four and zero. You know. Yeah, that's pretty much the way I see it. I I think Vanderbilt has had had its run. Yeah. And uh, now uh, Kentucky's got to just take care of business. Yep. Um, and then this matchup, all eyes on number 19, Colorado, at number 10, Oregon. Battle of undefeated. It sucks Travis Hunter won't be able to play. But Colorado is capable of hanging in this game. Now, are they capable of winning it? I don't know. I'm going to have to see it to believe it. I think Oregon wins at home, but I hope for a good game. What do you yeah, think? I, I I would expect – yeah, I expect Oregon to take care of business. Um, I, yeah. You know, eventually, eventually Colorado is going to have uh, a loss. Yeah. They're not going to run, run the table, okay? And yep. uh, if if there's a team out there to start that uh, downwards trend, it's Oregon. Yeah. Uh, now yeah. you've got you've got one heck of a, a offense uh, on both sides. Yeah. So yeah. defense is going to be uh, critical, and yeah. I think Oregon's got the defense. Yeah. Um... I think so. I think if Travis Hunter was playing, I might pick Colorado to win this. But since he's not, I know that's a massive loss. And so I think Oregon pulls it out. I don't think it's a blowout. I think it is a shootout. And, you know, if it's uh, 45-38, you know, something like that, I'm fine with that, you know. But it's going to be tough for Colorado to win on the road against Oregon without their best right. player, you know? Yeah, and, and if they somehow do it, wow. Yeah, and hopefully Oregon's smart enough not to say anything negative about Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't need that extra motivation, clearly. No. Uh, how about this? A battle of undefeated is number 22, UCLA, at number 11, Utah. Uh, I don't know if Cam Rising is back yet, but this is a, a big game. Yes, it is. Um, potential season debut. So it sounds like Cam Rising 
game action is not up to so, but as LA surgeon. So they're they're kind of planning on Cam Rising being back for this game. So that's big for okay. Utah. How do you see that game? Do you think Utah can or UCLA can go into Utah and get a big win? I think they're capable, but I don't think they will. Yeah. And we saw I had, that I had high hopes for Utah from the beginning. Yeah, and if they get Cam Rising back, that's exactly what they need. Yeah. And they have a great home field. We saw it against Florida. So I agree with you. Utah should win. Um, Ole Miss at Bama, number 15 Ole Miss at number 13 Alabama. Jalen Milrow back starting. If you were to pick a winner, who would you pick? Do you think that Ole Miss will go into Bama and win that? I I tend to think Alabama is going to find a way to win it. Well, it's it's hard to beat Alabama at home. Yeah. Um, but you know it's been done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, but these are familiar opponents and familiar coaches. And uh, a rivalry that's really uh, growing. Mm -hmm. And and so um, I think this ought to be a very good contest. Yeah. Yeah. It's a must watch for me. I do think Alabama will win. Yeah. But it should be a good game. I think Alabama's got a better defense. The defense, I I always lean toward that when it's a close game. Yeah. And the turnovers are so important. So if Jalen Milrow can protect the ball, that'll be huge. Absolutely. If he he throws two or three interceptions or turnovers, then you're you're asking for trouble. Um, Duke with a great opportunity to get to 4-0 this weekend at 0-3 UConn. So Duke potentially a 4-0 team, already ranked number 18. Um, Miami at Temple. I expect Miami to take care of business and win that. Um, do you do you agree with me on that, or is Temple capable of, of getting that win? Uh, the Miami game? Yeah. Num- no, undefeated that's... number 20 Miami at Temple. Yeah, I, uh, Miami's... Uh... Um, I, I I don't see them having any trouble. Yeah. Um, three and zero Maryland and Talia Tungavailoa at Michigan State. Now Maryland should absolutely win this and get to four and zero. But this is a big game for Maryland. They need to play their best game because at Spartan Stadium is always tough. It's a conference game. Uh, Michigan State just got their doors kicked in by Washington, so they're going to, I think, be looking to rebound. Michigan State's capable of the upset here. So, so you're, you're, you're a devoted fellow, I tell you. <laughs> uh, I, I, I Actually, Alec, <laughs> I, I hate to say this, but I think their chances are slim to none. Okay. They, and you might be right. Like, things might be so bad in East Lansing that Maryland runs away with it. But in my history, a home game in Michigan State, if their defense shows up, they could win a sloppy football game. But Talia's looks good. Maryland, if they take care of business, go to 4-0. That'll be a big road divisional win if they get it done or a conference. Yeah, well, I only say that, Alex, because – uh, if they didn't look so bad, yeah, the last game, you know, I would say, yeah, they, they, they can compete, but I, I just don't see it. Yeah, do you think Washington? I mean, Washington's really good, though, right? Yes, they are, and, and so I think, and I think Maryland's pretty good. Yeah, Maryland. I think Washington is head and shoulders above Maryland, but maybe you're right. Maybe Maryland is pretty pretty good, and so. This is an opportunity, like I said, if Maryland gets this win, keeps the ball rolling, I would love it if Talia could lead Maryland to, you know, to a pretty good season and maybe contend in that conference. Yeah, I, I think they'll be in the thick of it. Uh, yeah. I don't 
they're not going to win the conference, obviously, but they're they're, they're going to contend. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm looking forward to this game as well. Uh, you know, I I like Talia, and he's looked good so far this year. Uh, Louisville, a chance to get to four and zero at home against Boston College. How about this battle of two three and O's, two undefeated, BYU at Kansas. Um, I don't know how to call that game, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I really don't. I mean, um, I just I, first of all, I'm not used to even mentioning Kansas as <laughs> a threat in football. Yeah, and BYU is usually uh, pretty good. Yeah, but they're not as good as I've seen them before. Yeah, and and well, Kansas. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Kansas has looked pretty good from what I've seen. So yeah. I'm rooting. For, I'm I'm rooting for Kansas in this game. Yeah, I, I, I again the the spread would be interesting. I I think Kansas at home uh, might just pull it off. Yeah, I think this is a later game. I don't know. Three thirty kickoff on ESPN. Uh, Kansas is favored by eight and a half. Wow, that's yeah. more than I thought it would be. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Is, uh, uh, so th this is kind of throwing me. Is this BYU uh, first year in the Big 12? Have they been in the Big 12, or is, are they new? They're new. Is this their first year? Yes, I believe so. I think they were in the Mountain West or something like that. Yeah. I just saw it under their, their team name, Big 12. I was like, I've never seen that before. So that's, well, that's cool. Just, yeah, they just started that. Yeah. I like that, though, going forward. Um, yeah, I think they kind of fit there. Yeah. Yep. Um, Wake Forest, a uh, chance to get to 4-0. and They play at home against Georgia Tech. Uh, Arkansas at LSU. LSU should take care of business at home against Arkansas, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, LSU is back on track again. They're going to be uh, they're going to be tough the rest of the season. Yep. Yeah. Uh, good matchup of undefeateds. Number fourteen Oregon State at number twenty one Washington State. That'll be a fun matchup. Absolutely, yes. See which team comes out of that. Um, UAB at, at Georgia. I mean, UAB is not going to give Georgia a scare, are they? Georgia should be able to win that. Well, again, we, we're looking. We keep talking about it. <laughs> you know, they just don't. They just don't play anybody. Yeah. Uh, UAB in the past has been decent, and they yeah. have contended for this conference, but not this yeah. year. Yeah. So uh, that should be a blowout. Yeah, it should be. Um, number three, undefeated Texas at one and two Baylor. You know, this is another matchup where in past years, this could be a great matchup, a barn burner. But Baylor just isn't very good this year, so Texas should be able to run away with this one. Yeah, even Baylor at home, I don't think it's going to matter. Yeah, I agree. Texas looks for real. You know, until Texas plays someone that's, you know, a very dangerous threat, maybe Oklahoma is their best bet at knocking this team off. But I see Texas as going deep, you know, unless they get tripped up by a loss they shouldn't lose. On paper, Texas should be able to win most of their games. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Yeah. Um, and then the game of the weekend, really, number six, Ohio State at number nine, Notre Dame. Battle of undefeateds in South Bend. What are you looking for most in this game? What do you got your eyes on uh, going to, for Notre Dame against Ohio State? Well, I, my eyes going to be on the quarterback for Notre Dame. Yeah. He, he's the key to the whole uh, game as far as I'm concerned. 
And yeah. uh, you know, if he takes care of the ball, if he gets protection, uh, they they should be just fine. Uh, I'm really not scared, like I have in the past, of Ohio State. Yeah. Yep. And it, it's interesting, Notre Dame with the better quarterback in this matchup, right? Yeah. Sam Hartman. Yeah. That, I mean, that's what I've been saying for years is like Notre Dame gets a quarterback, look out, and it looks like they've got their guy. They do, you know, as long as they take care of him, uh, you know, give him, give him the protection he needs and the receivers. Uh <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and there's a running game and everything, so uh, the package is there. Mm-hmm. I just don't know how many points they're going to give up. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's interesting. I think. Do you think it's going to be a shootout, or would you rather see it low score? Like you know. I know Notre Dame's defense wants to hold Ohio State down. Can Notre Dame put up enough points on Ohio State's defense? I think, you know, 35-31, something like that, 35-32, I could see. Yeah, I I don't think they're going to – neither offense is going to be stopped on scoring. Yeah. Um, But – you know, I think it's going to come down to turnovers. Yep. Mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a great game. Um, it could go either way, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And, a, you know, great opportunity for Notre Dame. If you win this, get to 5-0, and and everyone's going to start taking Notre Dame very seriously if they win this game. And, then I'll set up the matchup against USC as, you know, game of the year, you know? Yep. Uh, that is the highlight uh, game of the of the week. Yeah. Um, even though Florida State is playing Clemson, the Ohio State-Notre Dame game is the, the prime game. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in the ones down farther, uh, there's some very good matches but it doesn't compare to that matchup. Yeah. Top 10 battle. So yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait to be in South Bend and go out to the bars. And if they win, then the atmosphere is going to be crazy. So I'm really looking forward to that on Saturday night. Uh, college game day in South Bend. And uh, the Pat McAfee show. Uh, doing a show live in South Bend on Friday. And, of course, Pat McAfee will be there for college game day. Um, do you watch college game day? Do you see what uh, headgear Lee Corso picks? Uh, it depends on what's happening in the, in the morning. Um, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't tune it in and watch the whole, what is it, three hours or whatever it is. Yeah, I like to see the I pick. Don't, I don't watch a lot of it. I, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. All the chitter chat of all these people that know everything about college football, to me, doesn't matter. Yeah. Because they're in the same boat we are. They're guessing as much as we are. Yeah. You know, they may have a few more other stats that we don't know about. But, you know, I, I don't think they're any smarter than we are when it comes to uh, who the better teams are and how no, things may play out. Not if you watch every week, right? It, anybody who watches every week is going to have a pretty good a, a grasp and idea of, of the game, right? And especially someone who's been doing it for as many years as you have. Well, I don't think that I'm the – top dog when it comes to that but you look at their records when they post them every week yeah they're not very good at picking winners yeah (laughs) really i mean you'd think that these pros would be you know almost right all the time yeah yeah i mean it's hard right like football 
you know, you can be favorites on paper, but you get on the field and who knows. And then national media yeah. guys get – they fall into the narratives too often, you know? Yes. I, th- I think that's part of the problem. So – um. Let's see here. Uh, where are we at? Okay, so uh, undefeated matchup in the Big Ten, number twenty-four Iowa at number seven Penn State. That was a good matchup. Yes. Looking forward to that one. Absolutely, yes. Uh, I, I I'm not really impressed with either team. I yeah. think either team can win. Yeah. I expect Penn State, too, at home, but I agree with you. Any team can win that, and it'll come down to who takes care of the ball, who executes. Probably yeah. a lower-scoring game there, but, but we'll see. Um, We talked about undefeated Memphis at undefeated Missouri. Uh. So, I mean, you know, those are the best games of the week, but we got a lot of good, good games. And so I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun once again. Yeah, I can see a, a little bit of uh, channel flipping, you know, to keep yeah. track of everything. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, uh, but Saturday night's going to be a lot of fun. Um and uh, best of luck to your Irish in a big game against Ohio State. I don't like Ohio State either. So, you know, go beat them and, and uh, stay undefeated, Notre Dame. So, um, yeah, let's uh, quick take a look at your numbers for this week. Uh, Texas. On top at number one, Florida State two, North Carolina and Duke three and four, Washington five, Colorado six, Oklahoma seven, Rutgers eight, Iowa nine, and ten, Missouri. What do you think about your no- the numbers this week? I I don't know what to think. You know, I look at them and I'm a little confused myself, but the numbers uh, don't lie. Yeah, they're telling you who's who's played the better uh, schedule, the stronger team. Yeah, yep. you know the teams that have played the weaker teams, even though they're undefeated, they're down their ways. Yeah, Georgia is in the numbers; they're twenty eight. Yeah, but they were like like forty something a week ago. Yeah, so as they win, they're going to move up. Mm-hmm. But the stronger teams they win. They're going to move up sooner, quicker. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I mean, it's the, the numbers just, they, they don't, again, like, like we said before, they don't care what you think the teams are. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you do? Yeah. You got to earn your spot. And, uh, I mean, we've already dropped off. We're, we've, we're down to about, uh, what? Uh, 30 some almost 40 undefeated teams yeah out of, out of 133 so yeah. we're we're squishing that uh undefeated group every week yeah and uh, this the week, undefeated teams will just keep right moving on up yeah and this week there's a lot of undefeated versus undefeated so that number is going to shrink a lot after this week yeah yeah, again, it will squeeze it up some. Yeah. Um, week, week three doesn't really tell you a lot yet of um, other than what the team has done recently. Yeah. It it doesn't it doesn't project anything. Yep. Yeah. I mean, all all it's doing is taking what's been done um, and rewarding the teams that have played a tougher schedule. And remember, Auburn was number three last week yeah they're 29 this week yeah that's crazy and they and they're still that? and they won they won but they played a division two team which give them a little credit 
Yeah. And remember, remember the teams that they beat before. Yeah. Those teams Cal. have lost again. Yeah. And so they're worth less. <laughs> so you could be yeah. undefeated, and and it, it still goes back to what did you do earlier? Yeah. You beat UMass. Okay, so what? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, you, you beat uh, Sanford. It's like, but they're Division Two. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, 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 you got to, and, and those teams then when they lose again, they draw points away from that team that beat them. Yeah. So it's a double whammy, you know, but, you know, if you keep winning, you're still we're going to gain points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just hard to explain. I mean, people... <laughs> no, I I like that. They'll look at this. And they they look at this and go, you know, where's this guy? What's this guy on? <laughs> but if they just stick with it, if they just stick with it, every every week they just pay attention to the top twenty. Yeah, and they're going to see uh, teams that are good. They're going to just keep crawling on up. Mm-hmm. And by week six or seven, you're going to have a pretty good idea of uh, who the playoff teams are. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, what it does, the the numbers does, most importantly, it values wins. It values, you know, if you're undefeated, you're going to be at the top of the list. You know, you, but you got to keep winning. Three and O is not going to get you there. Seven and O, eight and O, nine and O. Now we're talking, right? Yeah, you got, but you got to beat somebody. Yeah, you know that's right. the thing. You can go undefeated and not be on top. You could be the only undefeated team and not be on top because you didn't play anybody. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely interesting. So then it takes like a bad conference and a, you know, it takes everything into consideration. Now that's the big thing. Yeah, and so that's what everyone. That's what they're always debating every year and and arguing about on ESPN, and this gives you the actual formula to like, oh, you want to talk about a a weak conference, and then you want to talk about strength of schedule and impressive wins versus not impressive wins. This is the this is what you need right here. Yeah, and then you know, I like to go to the polls, and it's just you know status quo. Yeah. You know, Georgia yeah. is still, they're the greatest team ever, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and they haven't done anything, but, you know, they they got 57 in the AP, yeah. 57 number one votes. Yeah. And they haven't beat anybody. Yeah. So it's, has, the polls have nothing in common with what's been done so far. Yeah. It's just uh, and what they we don't think. even have Colorado there anywhere. Yeah, yeah, nineteenth in both the AP and the coaches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if any team has been more impressive than Colorado. No, I agree. And uh, and and you telling me you're yeah. going to rate LSU ahead of Colorado? Yeah, I know. Is it's interesting. I mean, you know, it's their uh, perception. Yeah. Perception polls and narratives yeah. and all that that get involved with it. Yeah. But, you know, it'll work itself out as, you know, as it goes. Yeah. But we'll have a ton to talk about next week. A great weekend coming up. I can't wait. And uh, the season's getting into the the best part of it. And uh, going forward, we should have a lot of fun Saturdays. So I can't wait. Yeah, there's going to be a big uh, shift in the polls and a big shift in the numbers after this weekend. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of teams that will not be undefeated. And the ones that do, that are playing some better opponents, will go. Will yeah, jump up. So well, it's going to be. Um, you're finally going to see some movement by the voters. Yeah, this, this week because they they don't have a choice. Yep. So I can't wait. Well, 
appreciate you taking some time again to come on the show and uh, we're going to keep doing this all season long and uh it's been a lot of fun so far and can't wait to keep it keep it going on you know yeah again i really appreciate it uh you know my two cents is worth about two cents (laughs) (laughs) but it's still fun to talk about our favorite sport absolutely and uh no, we, you know, it's cool getting your input, and uh, you've been is your input is definitely worth a lot. With you know how many years you've been watching the game and following it closely, and so I love as someone who's not a doesn't have that much experience bouncing some ideas off of you and talking about you know uh, big games and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun, so I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll do it again. We'll do it again. Give yourself some credit. You, uh, you know a lot about what's going on with this sport. So, yeah, you know, I, I, you, I don't consider you a rookie at all. You, you, you're into it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm growing, and uh, you know, you're helping along the way as well. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you coming on the show every week, and we'll keep this content coming out. So thanks again, Dean, and have a great week. Uh, Appreciate all all the listeners. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. And have a great week, guys. Peace out.